Hey guys, welcome back. This first portion of our video will be sponsored by our friends over at Green Chef. Um, so this part is going to be a voiceover because allergies had your girls going through it today. And I was really happy to get my Green Chef box because... I just was not in the mood. So um, if you guys have never heard of Green Chef, they are amazing. Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company. Meal plans include paleo, plant powered, keto and balanced living. Um, they come right to your door, contactless delivery, which is awesome during these crazy times and everything stays nice and cool. I chose the Mediterranean chicken for dinner tonight. And what I love is that it comes in just this beautiful little picture here, tells you the times, meals are super quick, the calorie or the carb serving, everything you're going to have in the box that you'll need. And then what you'll need on your own, which is usually super minimal things salt and pepper, you know, cookware, stuff like that. But super easy and quick is really what works the best for me, especially when I was not feeling the best. So um, yeah, Green Chef lets you choose from a wide array of easy to follow lifestyles with select organic ingredients. Recipes are quick, easy, step-by-step, -step. instructions, chef tips, and photos to guide you along. And if you're anything like me, it's great seeing like the instructions, but sometimes I need a picture for reference. Um, everything comes in these little bags and they show you all your fresh ingredients. Everything is labeled and save the little um, brown bag. And I use it as my garbage bag just to clean up my mess. But it's, I mean, so simple, literally. The ingredients do come pre-measured, pre perfectly proportioned, and mostly prepped, which is another awesome thing because it's just simple. And during these crazy times with e-learning and everything, we need simplicity. So diving on into our meal, it was just, it's real simple. It's basically like cut and chop and they tell you everything. Chop it this way, um, add this to the pan, preheat your oven. Um, so Rhea actually picked out this meal and it was really good. I've been actually kind of making my whole lifestyle kind of follow the whole green chef way where they keep everything low carb, keto friendly, but it's a lot of good fresh ingredients and I just feel really good when I eat them and everything tastes really well. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of like share this recipe with you guys. It was amazing. The another thing is, is Green Chef's Expert Chefs design flavorful recipes for your lifestyle that go way beyond ordinary substitutions. And let me tell you, they pair these ingredients together in ways I never would have thought. And then they come through with their killer sauces and whoo. The sauces are where it is at. The recipes include the pre-made measure sauces, dresses, dressings, and spices, so you can get more flavor in less time. That sauce, it was like a creamy pesto sauce. Amazing, amazing. Like they need to just bottle them up and sell them. If you guys were interested in trying Green Chef, use code 80DDIARIES to get $80 off your very first month plus free shipping on your first box. Go to greenchef.us backslash 80DDIARIES to redeem your code and for more details. Promise. I mean, I looked pitiful. Please don't judge how pitiful I looked, but it was so good and it was just, it hit the spot. And then I went lay down and had a Claritin. All right, on to the next meal. Let's get ready to make some dinner. So for this dinner option, we are going to have a beef soup. Um, in Spanish, they called it they call it caldo de res. So it's just a beef soup, like a beef vegetable soup. But um, it's very good. It's perfect for these cooler days. So it's fall friendly. I love my soups for the fall. And it is going to be a low carb option. But nonetheless, you can, we are going to add some vegetables that aren't low carb, but you just go ahead and pull them out. Mostly, mostly it's just going to be corn. But um, nonetheless, we are going to use, um, these are beef shanks, okay? And I keep, when I throw the, the meat into the pan, I leave the bone in. Um, Leo loves it because some of them still have a little bit of the marrow in there and he likes to eat the marrow out like right here. Um, but it gives a phenomenal flavor to your broth. So you, cause this is the actual bone. So you'll make your own bone broth and you know that is super good for like electrolytes and stuff like that. 
So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take these out of the pan and we're going to dice them up because we're going to toast them up before we cook them. And we're also going to cut up one white onion. I'm probably only going to cut up half of this one because it's pretty big just for the flavor, okay? And basically what I do with this, because this is a like a tougher choice of meat, I simmer this on low um, and I let it cook down and like really release all its flavors for probably, I would say maybe an hour, an hour and a half, because you're gonna want this to get really tender. And then I'll go in and I'll add the vegetables, any of my seasonings and stuff like that um, afterwards and you know so then i'll cook the vegetables so this could sit on your stove top usually i start this earlier in the afternoon like right now it's about noon and this should be ready to go probably around 3 30 4 o'clock so and then you'll have a nice warm cup of soup and it's great it stores well you can freeze this as well so it's a great freezer meal option so we're going to go ahead we're going to go through and cut up everything and get our pot ready and i'll be back all right so here is that piece of meat okay you could opt for a um, better cut that's probably a little bit more tender and use that. This does have a little bit of a fat in it. You could see like all of that right there. I'm going to leave that on there because it gives a really good flavor. So I like to dice my chunks up because that's the way I like to do it. But when Leo um, makes this himself, he'll throw this in there just like this and then let it simmer. So whatever way you want to do, you can just go ahead and do, but I'm just going to cut these up in chunks because that way everybody can get a nice big chunk of meat in their soup. And then I just leave this part just like this. And then I do serve that in the bowl. Like I said, Leo likes to eat around it and so do the girls. And they actually take out like this piece right here, the marrow of it, and they love it. So to each its own, I have about five pounds of this meat okay so like i said we're gonna cut that up but i'm just kind of going through and you just came from downstairs and just kind of dicing everything up to get it ready today is a perfect day for soup our high today is 58 degrees and it's chilly like it's sunny but it's chilly you got a little brisk feeling in the air so it's perfect and we're big soup eaters and I figured if this makes enough, then we could have it for leftovers for lunch during the week too while the girls are in school. Because like I said, we are big soup eaters in this family. So, And you can really bulk it up too and add a lot of vegetables. So we're going to do an assortment and I'll kind of go through them. But again, we're going to do um, mostly all low carb vegetables with the exception of some corn on the cob but I'm going to leave them full, obviously, so you can go ahead and pull them out or not serve them in your bowl, but they will give off some good flavor too, so remember that. So this piece is garbage. But all right, I'm gonna cut this up and I'll be back. In my pot, I have some extra virgin olive oil that I'm gonna go ahead and heat up because I am going to brown up the meat just to kind of give it a little bit of a, 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 little, bit, a little bit of a, just crispiness on the outside, not cook it all the way through, but um, it's going to release some really good flavor too onto the bottom of the pan. And then we're just gonna add some water and stuff like that. But nonetheless, get this nice and warmed up so we can start crisping up our meat. So we just dropped our meat in there. It's already smelling so good. Again, we're not frying this. We're just kind of just cooking it, like just giving it a nice little coat on there, okay? So the meat will shrink too. So if you see my pan, like this is just, I don't know, probably like a five quart like um, little pot. Uh, it's gonna shrink down, so don't be like, oh man, that's just like a big pot of meat. It's gonna shrink down because you're gonna cook it for a while and you know meat shrinks. So we're just gonna kind of flip this around. Just make sure nothing's burning on the bottom and everything has a nice little coat, right? We're gonna go in with our pink Himalayan salt and we're just going to go give it a nice little coat here season to taste make sure we get all all that meat cooked up it's going to help release some flavor all right you can see we're starting to see little brown bits it's looking real good and we're going to let this do its thing for a few more minutes and then we're going to cut up our onion while this is going but that's it looking really good and already smelling really good and we just put it on 
dumping in those onions into the pan the onions go and then we are going to add some fresh garlic we are going to do one whole clove of garlic and we're going to mash that in there i'm just going to use my garlic press once i find it and we're just going to press the whole clove in there but we're going to want to make sure that we break up these onion bits i like my onions in my soup to have a little bit of um I, I don't want them to be super diced i like for them to be like this like one of my i'm a we grew up on soups here's a fun thing you know when you grow up and you don't have money soups are like a go-to meal for families like that and because you can really make a little bit go a long way so we've always been big soup advocates in my family and um one of my favorite soups is french onion soup my grandma used to make that for me when i was little so i like i love it all but i have to i can't go too crazy because leo doesn't like it so okay we got that going looking real good looking real good so we're gonna cut up i'm gonna go ahead and press up this whole clove of garlic there's no such thing as too much garlic guys i'm telling you especially with fresh garlic like i just feel like you can't have enough like if the flavor really needs a little bit to go so we're gonna mash that up and i'm also going to add in my celery as well so that can give a really good taste to the um the meat okay so here we have our meat you can see it's already giving off some juice that's going to be so good i promise you everything is already smelling so good i went ahead and used i'm going to show you the this is the garlic press i have i've had it for years and years and years you could just squeeze it even with the skin on and then you could just pull the skin off and that's garbage and yeah so i've had it forever i will link one down below if you um are looking for one if i can find one but i got mine for my wedding shower and it's been a gangster ever since i also threw in about five stalks of celery in here and you could see that i cut them rather big and that's because of leo he hates the way um it tastes like celery taste but he loves the flavor it gives so i have to leave the pieces big enough so he can pull out or he gets all upset so this is pretty much ready to go so i'm going to throw in my chunks with the bone in it right toss them in here get them all in here and then we're going to go in and we're going to add water and how much i quite possibly can't tell you we're gonna just probably cover the meat so just cover your meat up that's pretty much the goal okay so here we have it there is our soup here i added probably about four cups of water we're gonna let it simmer let it do its thing like i said you're gonna want to let this cook down i would say at least an hour an hour and a half you really want to cook all that meat off the bone and just let all the flavors come out of the meat and the bone as well and the veggies and then we'll add in again um we especially with my kids like i love i could eat just a vegetable soup my family is not like that i'm like the only really big veggie eater um so the fruit or the vegetables we're going to add into our soup we're going to do the chayote if you guys remember that we did that for an apple pie we're going to use those in replace of an of potatoes we're going to add in a couple chunks of carrot a couple um uh, halves of some corn on the cob what else are we going to do? We're going to dice up a jalapeno. And yeah, a lot of people also put cabbage in here too. You can do that. I don't have any cabbage, so we're not going to add that. But it's it's still going to be a very hearty soup because you've seen all the meat. But it, it's going to be so tasty. Everybody's going to get a nice big, you know, hearty bowl of soup. And that's kind of what we go through because Leo isn't much of a soup eater. But if they're real hearty, almost like a stew, then he will eat it, okay? Because he just thinks that you can never get full off of soup. So nonetheless, um, we are good to go. 12.15 right now. And we'll probably be back about an hour, an hour and a half, and we'll check on it. But here you go. I mean, it's spooky season. Okay, so you can see how much it's actually went down. Because I told you the meat was all going to shrink. So um, looking real good. Taste very very good all on its own but i want to start adding my vegetables in so i'm going to um clean up you know what is that called skin 
whatever, peel. Uh, sorry, I'm going to peel a couple carrots and chunk those up. Um, here are those chayotes. I'm going to peel those as well and toss those in. And I'm going to dice up a jalapeno and I'm going to chop, jump that in. If you don't want to use that, you don't have to. And then I'm going to take a couple of these ears of corn and snap them in half and toss them in there as well. You could also add, I am going to squeeze a, a fresh thing of, uh, a whole thing of lime as well for the juice. Um, if you guys wanted to add spinach or cabbage or whatever veggies that you prefer, you can do that. Cauliflower, make it how you want it. This is just, I'm keeping it real simple because I know what my family will eat. And if they see weird veggies in there, they'll be like, I don't want it. Mostly my kids. So I'm going to go ahead and get these taken care of and I'll be right back. So here is our big old pot of soup. You see we have the chayote. I also wanted to remind you guys if you wanted to do zucchini, you could do that as well. Um, we usually always put zucchini in, but we were out. We've had it quite a few times this week anyways, so I'm kind of over it. But there's that chayote. You guys remember the things that look like this. Our pot got pretty full, so I didn't want to overdo it. So I've saved a couple for dessert. Remember, you just peel them and then dice them and make sure that when you cut them out, when you cut them, you don't you don't include the seed, okay? You take that seed out. And this is my big old garbage pile here. So that's my waste. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we have the carrots. I just chopped them in big chunks too, so I can go ahead and pull them out if I didn't want to have them. Um, and then there's a diced up jalapeno. And then there is some corn on the cob, just halved up um, into halves. And that's it. So um, I'm going to put a... I have this on low medium. I'm gonna top it and then let it simmer. And this should be ready probably about another 45 minutes or so. Remember guys, the only thing you're seasoning this with, you don't have to use any beef bouillon or anything like that. This is gonna be really, a majority of your flavor for this dish is gonna come from its ingredients. The fresh vegetables, the meat, you can see the meat and the marrow's already separating. That's where you're gonna get the, fresh, the freshness from. And tradition traditional uh, dinners like this Hispanic dinners it comes from the seasoning they don't use a ton of seasoning um, basically it's either like if you're gonna use some peppers or something like that to make a broth but it's mostly garlic and salt and that's what we have in here it's a so keep salting for taste um, what I go through is I will sit here like I'll have my little spoon right here and I taste the broth and then I'm like all right add some more salt and that's just kind of how I keep doing it and then that's just that's just it don't forget to add that lime juice. That's going to give it a little bit. The jalapeno does get a, give it a little kick. So if you don't want it to have that kick, you can omit that. Um, and then don't forget at the end, when we serve the dish, we are going to top it with some fresh cilantro. So that's going to be another fresh ingredient. So it is keto and all this stuff. But the way I've been choosing to do keto has been with a lot more... Um, cleaner ingredients a lot more fresh fruits vegetables cleaner proteins and stuff like that i'm just trying to nourish my body as opposed to being so carb conscious if that makes sense so um yeah i wanted to share this with you guys so we're gonna let this sit it's really really simple it's mostly just prep work and it's so good and here we go my friends our soup is done so it's cooked let me put this over here it's cooked now for about three hours, so, but look at how good it looks. And then don't forget, we have all the, um, the celery, too, at the bottom, so make sure before you serve, you give it a nice stir. And I'm going to add some fresh cilantro, but it is time to eat. So I don't eat um, the bone part. Leo and the girls do that. I just... I don't get down with it. So I'm gonna serve up a little bowl here and we'll be right back. All right, here is our bowl of soup. I have that fresh cilantro. We're gonna squeeze in some fresh lime. And that, my friends, is it. Homemade beef soup, or for my Spanish speaking friends, caldo de res, and it was so easy. Like I said, it was mostly just prep work and it's Honestly, guys, you can put whatever you want in there. And what I really liked about it, it didn't have a lot of like like garbage seasoning or whatever. It was all the seasonings and all like the taste came from the um, the produce and the meat and stuff like that. So, yeah, I hopefully you guys will like it. And this, my friends, is what's for dinner.
All right, my friends, and here is another what's for dinner. So this is what we are going to do. We have a bag of chili guajillo peppers. These are the dried peppers. You can get these in um, kind of like, I guess, the ethnic aisle. You usually see these hanging on a shelf, and there's a bag. You'll find, like, cinnamon sticks and all types of things. We got one big bag of the guajillo peppers and one big, one smaller bag of the chili ancho peppers. These are not necessary. Um, Leo just wanted to try doing both, so I'm going to take this whole bag of these and about a half of this one, and we are going to make a... I am going to say it wrong. So I have a hard time rolling my R's in Spanish, but it's called a, a, ber a berria, like a berria, like it's a shredded beef, okay? B-I-R-R-I-A, okay? If Leo was here, he would <laughs> totally say that for you guys appropriately. But it's like a shredded beef, and we're going to do a chili sauce. So this chili sauce I'm going to show you guys how to make. You can do this with multiple different recipes you could do it with the shredded beef like we're going to do today and have tacos and put on top of salads whatever you want to do okay but you can also use this sauce to do um like the caldo the shrimp or like seafood soup you could also use this to do a pozole so if you guys wanted to do that as well so this is going to be kind of one of those uh one one stop shop but this is a very good sauce to know how to make also you can make this sauce in bulk and then freeze it okay so these peppers are dried, right? That's why they look like this. We're going to open them up, and I'll show you guys, but we're going to pop these little tops off, and we're going to empty the seeds, and we're going to place them in a pot of water. I used to heat them, uh, but I've been, the last time I did it, I just soaked them in water until they softened again, and they, like, expanded, and then we did it that way, and it came out fine. So today, we're only going to soak them. This will, if you wanted to do this overnight, you could. Um, but we're going to do it. It's really early in the morning. It's only 820. So I'm going to start it now. Um, cause you're going to want to let them soak, you know, like two hours or so. And then we're going to go ahead and do the sauce. This is the, this sauce is a little tedious. Um, but I really encourage you guys to follow the steps I'm going to show you. Um, because that's how you're going to get your don donia status. Okay. Like that's how you're going to get like that boss status. All right. Because you are going to do you don't want to skip like straining and stuff like that okay so um like i said i'm going to go ahead i'm going to separate them and i'm going to show you guys how i do it and take out the seeds it's you don't have to take out the seeds when i first started doing it but it it lessens the straining time um because you're going to want to strain out the skin and the seeds when you make your sauce because if you don't you leave little flecks of the skin in there and they're they're hard and it doesn't taste good okay so this is a really great recipe and we're going to also do the meat in our instapot so that's going to also save us some time uh, we'll do it in our instapot i've done this before on the channel but it's a really great recipe and we've been really digging like fall vibes and this is like definitely a fall vibe one this would also be really great if you were going to have a party um, let me show you the meat we're going to use We just have a chuck roast. This is about four and a half pounds of a chuck roast, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and just drop that in the Instapot and top the sauce, and then we're gonna pressure cook it on high for about an hour and a half, so it's shreddable, super easy, and cleanup is minimal. Um, honestly, the, the most part is just making the sauce, again, don't skip it. The sauce seasoning as well is super simple. All we're going to season the sauce with is some garlic and some salt, and that's it. You don't have to do too much. So, um, yeah, you're going to want to do a chuck roast just because it's nice and shreddable, and it tastes really good. So let's go ahead and start um, breaking apart these, uh, these peppers, okay? All right, so I just have a bowl right here to catch our seeds, and I could just toss them in there, and then I have my pot sitting right here. And this is just, you know, same old stock pot I always use. And I'm just going to drop them in here. But we're going to have Sophie be our cameraman. These are what the peppers look like. So I'm going to show you how we'll do that. All right, Sophie, come on over here. Got Sophie being the cameraman today. Okay, hold that. And I want you to just, you got to face it down so you, can, so you can see, okay? So you see at this end, they have the little, um, where the stem would be. You're just going to crack those open and you just kind of do like this. I take the stem part off and then all you're left is with that. So here this one has a stem. You just crack it off at the stem and do one of those. 
and just get it all out of there and drop it in the pot. And then it's a little tedious, but the meal will be worth it. And again, you could get these, you could freeze this and use it for another recipe. So if you wanted to make just a big bulk of the sauce and then go ahead and save it in your freezer. So say maybe in like two weeks or something you wanna do um, a pozole or something for your family or if you wanna try your hand at it, which is really easy guys. It's really, really easy. If you guys wanna see a pozole recipe, let me know. We can totally do that because my girls love pozole, right Sophie? You like pozole? Tell them so they can hear you. I don't know, I don't like it with a long line. Huh? I don't like it with a lot of lime because it's like really it. spicy. It's really spicy. So the spice is uncontrollable. I can't tell you this because it just depends on your peppers. So sometimes you'll get a really good batch of peppers and you can get a really good kick to your uh, uh, sauce. Sometimes you don't get a good batch of peppers. It really just varies. So that's just kind of one of the things that happens. Because my mother, I had asked my mother-in-law too because one time I made it and it wasn't that spicy and she just told me it just you can't control that it's like a luck of the draw so sometimes you can get a really good batch sometimes you don't it just depends okay so yeah we're gonna go through this whole we're gonna do about half of this bag and we're gonna do the whole thing of the chili anchos I'll show you how to do these ones really quickly because we're gonna do this whole bag So these are the chili anchos, they're a little bit bigger, they're darker. Same thing, you're just gonna go ahead and... so much seeds in everything. Huh? Why there's so much seeds in everything? It just depends, some, some of them have more seeds. And just shake them out, okay? And then toss that in there. So just keep going through and doing it, and then we'll be back. Okay, so here is our big pot. I'm sorry, the girls are in school, but here is our big pot of the um, peppers. I just went through. If you don't get all the seeds out, don't worry about it. Becky, can you lower that just a little bit? If you don't get all the seeds out, don't worry about it because we are going to strain it. Just try to get the majority out because it will help you in the long run. And you're going to fill this up with water so it's submerged. And then I top it with a little um, plate so everything stays beneath the water. And yeah, um, don't get rid of your broth either okay or the water that's in there because we're going to use that as well everything that's in this pot will be used for the broth or like the sauce okay so yeah fill this up with water and just let it sit on the stove and that's it okay so here is our water filled up and then what I do is I get and then I kind of just drop the plate in there to make sure everything stays because right now they'll stay because they're still dry but once they start to fatten up they're going to start to rise so just keep an eye on it but it takes some time i used to heat this up and like i said we tried a different way and it it made no difference so um we're just going to leave it like this so it's 8 40 right now these should be done i would say probably around closer to 11. so again if you want to do this stuff overnight you could um i just have the time this morning so we're gonna leave that and I'm gonna clean up my mess and then we'll be back. All right, so it's been about two hours and here are the peppers. Make sure you are washing your hands if you touch these because they give off a little heat, but you can see they're nice and fat now. So we can go ahead and start preparing. Um, you're gonna need a few things to make the sauce. You're gonna need a blender and you're gonna need a strainer, but I'll show you the ones I have. Um, you can use whatever blender you have. You know, I have like I forget whatever one I have, but um, it doesn't have to be fancy. You use whatever blender, but the strainer, you're going to want a thinner uh, metal strainer. You can find them at the Dollar Tree, but, or they have them at Walmart too, but I'll show them to you right now, but this is it. This is all you have to do. Um, remember to not empty this broth, okay? You're going to need that. Okay, so here we have our setup, all right? So we have our blender. We have our pot with the peppers. This is just the insert of my Instapot. So I just have that out right here. And this is the type of um, strainer you're gonna need. I like this one because it sits right on here, okay? Um, and then, oh, you need one more other thing. We're going to start, I have everything on um, like cutting boards because this stuff is really messy sometimes and I don't wanna stain my, 
my countertop. I'm just definitely afraid of ruining this countertop. So you're gonna go ahead, this is nice and big, so you're just gonna go and you're gonna fill all of, you're gonna fill it as much as you can, your um, blender, right? Usually I have Leo helping me with this, but you know, a man's gotta work and such. But go ahead and fill this up as far as you can, and then we are going to ladle some juice in here. So let me fill this up and I'll be right back. All right, so you can see it's about halfway. If you have to add more liquid as you go, add more liquid. I just ladle it out. And then we are going to just blend this on high. And that's it. Okay, so now I have it blended. And this is where, this is the tedious part, but it is worth it, okay? So you're gonna pour your sauce in here. Some pieces didn't blend up, but that's okay, because we're gonna strain it. Okay, and you could hear some of it already going down, and that's when I take this. I'm kind of gonna do a spot check to make sure I don't have red sauce everywhere. That's all, that's all I gotta do. So you just go through, and then you just press. These chunks and everything and the seeds, we're going to um, toss that, but we're gonna go ahead and first strain everything. And you can see at the bottom, that's where, all, that's where all your broth is gonna come in. These chunks of skin that didn't soften, we don't want those in our soup. We don't wanna eat those because they're gonna be hard and you will find them in your meat and it's really gross. So again, this is an extra step, but it's a step that you should not skip. Okay, so we have about, this pan is about half full. So that's just gonna be enough for this, okay? We're gonna go in with some sea salt, if you guys can see. And I'm gonna take, to start, uh, about two tablespoons, okay? Two tablespoons. And then, if you guys wanted to add, add fresh garlic, you could. Um, but I'm just gonna do some powdered garlic. Not even the best kind, it's just some Walmart off brand. We're gonna do about two tablespoons of that. And then we're gonna mix, and then we taste it. This is a little bit frozen, but it'll be okay. So you're just gonna put that in there. Smurge it down a little bit. And there you go. So we're gonna toss this into, I'm gonna add this into the Instapot. I'm gonna wash my hands up real quick before I accidentally touch my eyes and burn my face off. All right, so we have our Instapot. I have an Instapot link down below, but you all already know what Instapot is. Um, make sure that your thing back here is hit to seal. And we are going to pressure cook this. I gotta hit. And we're gonna increase our time to, I'm gonna do about two hours, okay? All right, so two hours, um, high pressure, boom, that's it. So make sure everything's sealed, you're gonna let it cook, and let it natural release, and that's it. It's gonna be real good. So when it comes time though, but two hours, so it's 11 o'clock right now, and um, it'll be ready around two, so this will be perfect. Um, probably about 2.30 it'll be ready, and it's real easy. So I know the broth does take some time, but this is something you can prepare ahead of the time. This would be perfect for like Sunday dinners, Sunday football dinners, you know, if your kids are doing, you know, sports or whatever you guys got going on. Hey, you're going to the pumpkin patch and you're in a, you're, I don't, I don't know, something will be, this is, I like doing these on Sundays. This is like my favorite, one of my favorite Sunday dinners. So um, yeah, we're just gonna let that bad boy go. I'm gonna clean up my mess and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I let it natural release for about 10 minutes, and now I'm going to just quick release it. I keep a little uh, towel on there, just because uh, sometimes with this red sauce, it'll kind of sprinkle up too. And yeah, so it should be all good. I'm pretty excited. And I'm gonna let, like I said, let this uh, steam release. I let it natural release, so just left it alone um, for 10 minutes, and then I quick released it. So um, when I take it off, I'll show you. All right, so we are quick released, hold on. And there you go. So the meat will rise, okay? Um, I'm actually gonna turn this off now because it's like bubbling. 
And what I will do, okay, so here is the meat. Look, this is just so tender. You guys can see, I just, I'm gonna, took it out of the pan to just kind of break it up. And I just kind of use my little spatulator here just to shred it. And then I'm going to drop it back in that sauce. And look at this though, it's so, oh, but it's so, it has such a beautiful color. It has such a great smell. I'll take a little piece out and we'll try it. But they do, whoa, girl, I almost lost all that dinner into that sink. Looks good, huh, Becky? Yeah. Smells good too, right? Okay, let me grab a little piece here. I think it's perfect. Try a piece, Becky. I can grab. I'll grab a piece for you, okay? Here you go. Mm -hmm. It's good, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna put this back into the pot so we could sit with all the sauces because you can see, like, we only thing we really have. We might have a couple chunks or something like that, but um, I just wanted to break it up so we can serve it with that. We are gonna do um, like taco style. So we have these low carb tortillas. We have, I'm just not gonna eat it with that, but for Leo and the kids, I have some fresh cut up avocado, some tomatoes, some onion, and we have some cilantro over here that I'm gonna cut up as well. So nice little selection. And I think I might even have a lime somewhere. I'll have to. So here you go, my friends. Here is our like shredded beef, I guess. This is. Like, like the traditional berria, I want to say it's called. So we just made it into tacos. You guys seen the sauce? I said you can use it for multiple recipes. It's so good. It's a little time consuming, but it's worth it. And as far as after that, it's just throwing everything in the Instant Pot. So um, yeah, but look at how good, nice and juicy, nothing is dry. And here are Leo's tacos. So that my friends is what's for dinner. It's so much harder.